Hi, I'm Patty Jones, and I have been collecting purses and anything era since 1967. And I'd like to uh, give you some information on purses from the Model A era. Purses have been used by men for many, many centuries, and women started using them. Uh, and they put those underneath their petticoats way back in the 1600s. I'm going to talk to a little bit about all the different styles that we have for our era. Um, I'm going to start out with some beaded bags. Um, I do not collect the beaded bags anymore. Um, one of the comments is, and one of the questions is, how do I uh, put beads back on a purse or whatever? And we'll talk about that towards the end. But there's a reason why I don't collect beaded purses because I can't do beading. And if you have beaded purses, you'll know that they um, deteriorate quite rapidly. There is this nice beaded book that anybody could uh, purchase. They could also, they had some patterns. It also had um, the frames and everything. So women back in the 20s actually started uh, doing their own beading way back then. I'm gonna show you a couple of purses that um, I, like I said, I don't collect. I've got this collection that I bought um, that I'm gonna resell, but these are beaded purses that are very, very common. They're very, very seed beads. Um, a lot of the purses, including the, even the enamel ones were adorned with all kinds of beading, uh, sequins and, and uh, that kind of stuff. This is another, this is a particular purse that is worn um, during probably more daytime. It's got a celluloid uh, frame um, and it was inspired by the pharaohs and Egypt when they opened up King Tut's tomb. And uh, this is very, very similar, but this is usually a little earlier than our era for beaded. Back uh, in the 20s, uh, they did a steel bead. And the steel beads, if you see a lot of beautiful purses, um, they're deteriorating because the steel beads, when they were produced, they had a lot of acid in it. And of course, when people are, are sewing their, their beads on, they're using it maybe on uh, silk or fabric or whatever. And that um, acid from the beads then destroys the um, silk uh, over a period of time. So these are the steel beaded kind, and this is a, a model era one with um, a little bit of enamel, but it's that steel beads to show you what they, what they look like. You see them a lot. A couple of other just examples. This particular beaded bag, like I said, I don't really collect much. This is our era when this is something that we would wear maybe in the late afternoon uh, type of thing. It's made a seed bead with Chupunto type of um, embroidery on it. This starts to get into 1930, 31, uh, when they started to have a more envelope style purse. One of the most important, one of the oldest companies in um, the U.S. is Whiting Davis. Uh, they were started in the late 1800s. Um, and then from there, um, they, uh, ended up buying another purse company called Mandolin. I'm going to show you some of the Mandolin purses. He was the gentleman who owned Mandolin was Turkish and you'd see a lot of Turkish type of rug patterns on his on his particular purses. Um, he also started with the little um, beads at the end. Uh, that was before Whiting Davis started doing it. To copy. There's another one instead of the dangles, they have, he has the fringe on this one. There was a lot of looky likes. This is a looky like um, from um, another manufacturer. It is not marked. So um, we have no idea who made this particular one. As we get into late 3031, the, the, the enamel purses and stuff like that started to come like more like a pouch versus the more fancier square boxy shape. This particular fabric is called a luma mesh. And this actually was produced in about starting in 1935. I originally thought it was an original, uh, it was Model A era. Yeah, I've since learned that it's basically mid thirties. 
So this is a little bit later, but you still could wear it with your ear image. This particular purse has a compact and a mirror, and it's all, and this one here happens to be new old stock. It's never been used. The style that we really are looking for are ones like this. There again, this is a Wedding Davis, um, and it's a, um, also a compact purse, but uh, this is our era, and it's got the, the uh, rouge and the uh, makeup that the, um, a wearer could put, in, could put in here. But this is particularly our era versus this this particular one with the aluminum mesh. Whiting Davis had many ways of identifying their, their purses. Some of their purses were done on the frame. And I think you can see that. Um, in 1929, they started to put little flaps, little flaps that say Whiting Davis on here. But guess what happened? Whiting Davis, the little flap would come loose and fall off. So back in, then they, back into 1930, they ended up changing it and going back to um, uh, marking the frames. These are all Whiting Davis uh, purses here um, with a margasite on this particular one. They did the frame and they were the very first ones to do a painted design on a very fine mesh. Earlier mesh purses were very heavy. Um, this is probably around or, uh, 1900s, give or take. Um, this is probably earlier 20s. This particular purse weighs a lot. Uh, and then they went to the finer mesh, which then Whiting Davis could actually paint on them. Whiting Davis also, um, mark their purses with little tags like this one here has that says Whiting Davis on here. Um, and Whiting Davis actually did, took the uh, French uh, uptake of Art Deco and started doing their purses in Art Deco. And so they were influenced by France and, and how they Art deco their um, purses. You can see up here, this is another Art Deco. Look at how the, the top of the frame of the purse is very Art Deco. And they actually started to reproduce, Whiting Davis started to reproduce uh, some of their uh, purses back in the 80s. And this particular one, it's a heritage version. The one thing you can tell, and I unfortunately was was duped by a couple of uh, a couple of times is they have a super super long chain on them and that means that it is not our era when it's this this long of a chain um is not our era but they were reproduced back in the 80s here's another example of one with a very long chain reproduced and they actually even put this one here has a old style Whiting Davis tag on it. They are not our era, uh, they're later, but you could shorten the, the chain and you could actually wear those for your era image type of um, outfits. Other types of um, materials that they were uh, was used is their rhinestone purses, like this particular one, are all set in prongs. So when you're looking for wine rhinestone purses, be sure that you look for the prong set type of rhinestones. They did have what they call rondelles. And this is another style of rhinestone that was produced in our era. Uh, sequins, I'm gonna have to go back. Sequins um, were flat. If you see anything that's a cup sequence, that's much later than our particular era. One of the things that Whiting Davis also started to produce was they had a, um, in the probably 1930, maybe a little bit earlier than that, they started producing what they call beadites. And what they did was they were trying to, to uh, compete with the beaded purses. And what they did is they punched each of the little squares out 
So uh, they're, they're 3D to give you the effect of a beaded purse. Um, Whiting also perfected this, what they call spider mesh. And it's a very different mesh from uh, what you normally would see. And they found that their purses lasted longer because of how the little individual um, uh, enamel uh, facets are connected. And they're connected in five different points. So this, this is a little bit, this is probably uh, 1931, 3031, when they came up with this other design that they patented called um, the uh, spider patent. Purses that our era, this is um, what's um, happening, what you can do is they had um, patterns that you could do as a seamstress. These are two different ones that you could sew this at home. They'd send you the leather, they'd send you the beads, and you put the, you put the whole outfit together. These are particularly suede. Some of the other ones, for instance, this is a straw purse. And I have a copy of um, the uh, Ladies Home Journal that has this exact purse. And it has a uh, very heavy zipper that you put in, very heavy. And it also has a little coin purse that you could make. And look at how wild the uh, lining is this particular person used. But uh, these were all handmade by uh, the, the buyer, the owner. Um, so um, they could, uh, um, we had, they had a lot more time than, than we would today uh, to, to do a lot of handwork. Uh, another way would be to take um, uh, linen like this and you can embroider it. And this one here happens to have a B, which was my maiden name. And they also had the zipper, but everything came in a kit that you could sew and put things, to put them together. Uh, other fabrics that were used for our purse era is velvet. This is particular one's got a very, very short little handle on it. Um, this is a embroidered uh, purse. Um, I believe it could be handmade. Um, with uh, the slip stitching and then the fancier enamel type of uh, frame on this particular one. Um, back then, um, everybody used a lot of the, did a lot of embroidery. A lot of tapestries were used then. You can see this particular one is probably made in France. This was probably made by somebody. And the reason why I say that is look at how fine the the tapestry is on the French one versus the uh, you, uh, one that could have been made. Um, also, this one here has a really gorgeous frame on it that uh, I've kept it for examples, but it's, it's got uh, jewels on it as well as enamel that was used. Other types of um, things that when, you, when you're looking for model A era purses, this particular one is just your cow grain leather. Um, this one here is just a, 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 a red leather, but the one thing I wanted to point out is the backs. This one has a, a vertical stri uh, strap. This one has a horizontal strap. A lot of times your coats back then did not have uh, a button um, to hold them in place, but people would wear and hold their coat with uh, their purse. And you'll see a lot of illustrations in a lot of the magazines that are very much like that. Uh, some of the leather type of um, uh, tool, tooling leathers coming up here is this is a uh, obviously a real alligator, uh, but very typical of our era um, with the leather inside. Um, you can't really buy and sell these anymore, at least not, not on eBay anymore, because, because uh, they're endangered species or something like that. There were two great big manufacturers of lead, tooled leather purses. Um, this is a Gemco, which is one of your, your biggest manufacturers. They also advertise the turn type of uh, snap thing to open up. This one here has a coin purse as well as a mirror. And uh, at one time, this was sold for $17.50. I have the original uh, price tag 
on this particular one. The other um, major manufacturer for these leather purses um, was Meeker. And this is a fairly gorgeous looking Meeker. And you see the tooling on there. And there again, um, lots of compartments and things like that. Um, these were worn every day. The ladies always brought these kinds of purses out to go grocery shopping. I know it'll look a little fancy for us, but uh, that's pretty much what they did back then. Last but not least, I'm gonna show you now is, this is a Chamoya. And the Chamoya was made by, um, it, it could be different type of Indian um, tribes made these, but they were weaved and uh, came on the market in about 1930. Um, I've seen some of these like on, for sale, like on eBay, and they're like, somebody wanted 100 or 200 bucks for one of those, and that's, that's way too much. I'm gonna go ahead and get into one last little thing I was going to share with you guys. Old purses never die. So if you have an old, um, in enamel purse, you can see what they used. This was uh, dated in 1945, Popular Mechanics, so people could, could use these. Another big help is the Antique Purse Collector Society. I belong to that, and you should go on their website. They have a lot of great information. It doesn't, it's not very expensive to join, so um, I do think that that would be uh, something that you would want to see. Um, other people have asked me now, um, I wanted to, to, to show people, this is, guess what, lighter fluid. If you have a fabric purse and you need to have something cleaned, I also use it for clothing. I use this if I have a little spot. Um, I, I swear by lighter fluid and it really does work well. Um, if you have a metal, purse that's dark like this, what I do is so long as it doesn't have a lining or if it has a lining, take the lining out. I soak it in ammonia and water. What it does is that ammonia works on that oxidation and the bottom of your bowl, plan, whatever will be absolutely black. Um, the other, the other um, uh, thing I wanted to, to tell you was uh, I don't usually uh, paint or fix up these kinds of things um, just because I, it's so hard to match the paint on them. Um, I just wish that there was a way of doing it, but I can't, I don't, don't, uh, I, I don't usually touch the mesh purses like this. The enamel purses every now and then I, I, I can match the color. If I have one or two little squares that aren't quite right, I'll do, I'll, I'll do that. Um, one, if, if you've got a metal uh, purse, like, like this particular one here, uh, Mother's uh, Chrome Polish will clean some of this up. Uh, but if once the chrome um, or once, a, once the um, uh, gilting on it comes off, you really can't do anything with it. I actually try to touch it up with a little bit of silver of that polish stuff just to kind of even it out because you'll see black spots on a lot of things. As an example, this would be the black frame on this. And let's see, last but not least, uh, on all my leather purses, and I don't do them as often as I should, I use either baby oil or um, mineral oil on my purses just to keep them supple and shiny and, um, I can clean those like this has got a little rub rough on here rub on here it will take that off also it will also make your leather a little bit darker but it's not that bad 